and I color coded the periodic table into three colors, pink, green, and blue. So you follow the rules for the given set of colors. So pink does its own thing, green does its own thing, and blue does its own thing. And it's based off of where on the periodic table the first atom in the compound is located. So you got a compound with two atoms in it. Wherever the first one is, if it's in the pink, the green, or the blue, those are the rules you follow. Okay, so if your first atom is in the pink, you follow the pink rules, green, you follow the green rules, blue, you follow the blue rules. Um, your periodic table in the PowerPoint I gave all of you guys is black and white. You may want to take three seconds and label that all of these plus boron and aluminum is pink, all of these plus hydrogen is blue, and then the rest is green. Really, you should be able to tell blue apart on your periodic table, but the pink from the green is, is difficult. You can still tell the pink's darker. Is it? Yeah, pink's like a shade darker. Sweetness. So, let us begin with pink. So, let's we'll start with the pink section first. The pink section, you cannot get any easier if you try. Simply, you say them out. Add I to the end. We already talked about um, how to combine ions and make ionic compounds, right? So sodium's a plus one, chlorine's a negative one, so they just go together, right? Magnesium is a plus one, fluorine's a, magnesium's a plus two, fluorine's a negative one, so you need two fluorines to go to the, does that all sound familiar? We've all, we've done that. All right, so, there's only one way these can go together. It can only happen one way, so we don't have to worry about the naming. We can just say magnesium fluoride, potassium oxide, sodium fluoride. Really easy. So for the pink section, super simple, add IDE to the end. There's no numbers, add IDE. there's no other words, it's just really simple. All right, next, let us discuss the green section. The green section is a little troublesome because a lot of those transition metals in the green section can have more than one charge. So you can't just say copper oxide because copper can have multiple charges, so it can be put together in multiple ways. So you gotta figure out what charge it has at the time. So, CuO. O has a charge of negative two, always and forever. But copper doesn't necessarily, so you gotta figure out its charge. Well, if O has a negative two, that means here, copper has to have a positive two, because they have to balance each other out. So, in this instance, copper has a positive two charge. Since copper has a positive two charge, you would name this copper two oxide. So in Roman numerals, after the metal, you write the charge of the metal. Okay. This guy. Iron must have a charge of positive three here. Do you guys see why? Let me go into smart board mode. Because oxygen has a charge of negative two. Always. So if you have three negative twos, you have a total charge of negative six coming from the oxygen. That means you must have a total charge of positive six coming from the iron to balance it out. So if you have a positive six and you have two of them, each one has to be three. Each one has to have a charge of positive three. So think of it as the charge divided by the number equals the single charge. Total charge divided by the, the number of, of ions equals the single. So that means each iron has to be a positive three. All right, out of smart board mode, back to regular mode here. 
So that means this would be called iron three oxide. Because again, iron has a charge of plus three. This three has nothing to do with the number of atoms of iron or of oxygen. It's just simply the charge of iron. This, right, iron or oxygen again is a negative two, iron again is a positive two. So this is going to be iron two oxide. So it changes, so you have to know its charge is kind of a pain. I don't know. All right, last but not least, 